exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood announced the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holiness. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fall that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night 
worth worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle a solemn of offering, the work of bees of your servants and hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ, your Son, who came back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we now begin our solemn vigil, reflecting upon the history of our salvation. Let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. And so as we enter into this sacred time, I invite everyone to be seated and extinguish your candles. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, 
Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day, 
from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites might pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them, then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. 
The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hands over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled hurled them into the midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Sea. The elite 
into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us see. ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day. For what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act a house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols that I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and, a pla and place a new spirit within you taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both Testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. de la carta del apóstol San Pablo a los romanos. Hermanos, todos los que hemos sido incorporados a Cristo Jesús por medio del bautismo, hemos sido incorporados a su muerte. En efecto, por el bautismo fuimos sepultados con él en su muerte para que, así como Cristo resucitó entre los muertos por la gloria, del Padre, 
así también nosotros llevemos una vida nueva. Porque si hemos estado íntimamente unidos a Él por una muerte semejante a la suya, también lo estaremos en su resurrección. Sabemos que nuestro viejo yo fue crucificado con Cristo para que el cuerpo del pecado quedara destruido a fin de que ya no sirvamos al pecado, pues el que ha muerto queda libre del pecado. Por lo tanto, si hemos muerto con Cristo, estamos seguros de que también viviremos con Él, pues sabemos que Cristo una vez resucitado de entre los muertos, ya nunca morirá. La muerte ya no tiene dominio sobre Él, porque al morir, murió al pecado de una vez para siempre, y al resucitar, vive ahora para Dios. Lo mismo ustedes, considérense muertos al pecado y vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Palabra de Dios.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Christ's obedience, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim, to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't know about y'all, but it's hard for me not to shout those words tonight. Part of the joy of the Easter Vigil, this night of nights when we gather to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, is that everyone and everything tonight is celebrating his lordship. Every creature in heaven, on earth, and under the earth breaks our customary silence tonight to shout his name together. In the bonfire, in the candles at the beginning, fire lit the way for us, showing us the path of change that our Lord Jesus walked. And at the baptismal font here in just a few short moments, the water itself will cry out in the words of the, apostle, or of the prophet Isaiah, all who are thirsty, come to this water. Beg for the blessing so that the gate may be opened for the presence of Christ's spirit. On this night, every tongue in heaven, on earth, and under the earth unites to proclaim the glory of God and the triumph of the Lord Jesus fire and water, darkness and light, silence and words, death and life, Father God and Mother Church, the divine and the human. In other words, my brothers and sisters, all that is and all that can be is on this night brought together into one shout of joy in the Lord's own person. As he gathers up creation within himself from the silence of the tomb, and then rises to begin the pilgrimage back to the Father, bringing every one of us with him. The harmony that existed in the beginning when God created all things good, and indeed very good, is restored in him. Obviously, it's not as if the problems of sin and death have never existed. It's just that tonight especially we see how they've been transcended, overcome by something far greater and far more powerful by the power of the name above every name, a name that restores our memory of what always should have been. It's a lot like the experience of Israel when they crossed that Red Sea. 
They sang a song of triumph that went beyond any song sung before it in the scriptures. They sang to the Lord who covered himself with glory. And tonight we celebrate that this triumph extends not just to that one people once upon a time, but to everyone, that the holiness of God's great name might be proven among all nations. For us, especially tonight, I believe the greatest sign of how Christ truly gathers all things in himself to return us to the Father is in the people who stand at the center of our celebration. The dedicated community of y'all who've been walking the journey towards the sacraments over the past year are RCI members who inspire all of us by how you've taken the Lord's outstretched hand and chosen to walk with him on a journey to what you were always created to be. My dear friends, on behalf of our entire parish, it's been such an honor to walk with you this far, and I look forward to walking even further down the road with you. Thank you for the gift you give of your witness and your willing response to God's call. Thank you for not following the way of the world outside, but instead choosing to walk your, pil your pilgrimage as part of our St. Thomas Catholic community. I pray, truly pray, that the power of this night, the wonder of the joy that we receive this evening from the risen Lord will be something which resonates in your hearts and minds forever until we all arrive together one day to that bright country where Jesus is. I mention our RCIA very specifically because they're a sign of the renewal that God is continuing to bring to every single person here present. Our RCIA's journey is a sign of our own. And as we've encountered each other over this past year, listening and learning from each other and learning to find God in each other's faces, we found that God truly has been the one to arrange our meeting upon this road. Remember, my friends, the journey we embark upon with the sun and his rising isn't just to a place, even as a place as majestic as this church arrayed in all of its Easter splendor. Our journey is a spiritual one a movement to the reality of who and what we were created to be. Walking with Christ, we embrace our true identity as children of the Father, as brothers and sisters all. We recall who we were once before we were wounded by the woes of the world, and we find in Christ the ability to be that once again, or perhaps even to be it for the very first time. And as we walk this journey together, our tongues proclaim the truth together. And we find ourselves joined in witness to that truth by all creation. Water, here in just a few short moments, will take up again the power it had at the beginning of creation to carry God's will and spirit. And as for the Israelites, so for us, it becomes the narrow way leading to the land of the Father's promise. After all, 2,000 years ago, just outside the city walls of the holy city of Jerusalem in a backwater Roman province, when Pontius Pilate was governor and Tiberius was emperor, three days after an unjust crucifixion and on the first day of a new world to be. The sun rose and dawn broke out in a chorus of triumph as two women, both named Mary, went to Jesus' tomb and found a stone there rolled away. An angel came down from heaven. An earthquake shook the stone away from the front of the tomb and spoke in words that went beyond every possibility of human hope. You're looking for Jesus, the crucified, but he is not here. He has been raised just as he promised. And with those words, all of creation that for so many countless angel ages had groaned under the burden of sin and death, we were freed to walk with the Lord back to the Father. It's such a joy tonight to know also that not just every tongue proclaims God's glory together, but that we actually get to hear and experience this reality. The Easter can, the candle that shines before us tonight is a sign that Christ himself goes before us on the way, a pillar of cloud and fire like the one that once guided Israel beyond the Red Sea. That pillar of fire in just a few moments will lead us over to the waters of baptism. And when our RCI members are baptized, we'll all be renewed along with them. When the smell of the sacred chrism fills the church for confirmation, 
all of us will experience again the intoxicating rush of the Holy Spirit upon us. And when all of us together as one family eat the bread and drink the wine which is our salvation, not just our bodies, but our souls will be satisfied. At this moment, my brothers and sisters, on this night our knees bend and all created things speak together with clear voice. So soak in the water tonight, walk in the new light of Christ and feel his warmth in fire and in friend. Breathe deeply of the oil's perfume, and with feet washed by the pilgrim Son of God, be refreshed with the bread and wine of the Lord's love, the wedding feast of heaven prepared for us here below. Feel this moment, my friends, for as long as it lasts. Feel life as it really is, with the crude veil of sin and death stripped away. And together, we'll walk with renewed strength the pilgrim way that Jesus has opened for us to the heavens, that we might return with him to the Father's house, in sacrament, in symbol, in mystery, in merriment, and above all, in truth. On this night, of all nights, by the power of his resurrection, we cry out with every tongue in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, to the glory of God the Father, as the whole people of God together say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Al nombre de Jesús, todos doblen la rodilla en el cielo, en la tierra y en los abismos, y todos reconozcan públicamente que Jesucristo es el Señor, para gloria de Dios Padre. En verdad, por mí es siempre difícil no gritar esas palabras, Porque parte de la alegría de la Vigilia Pascual que estamos celebrando, la noche de las noches en que celebramos la resurrección del Señor Jesús, es que literalmente todos y todo proclaman su señorío. Cada cosa creará rompe su silencio para pronunciar su nombre esta noche. En la hoguera y las velas, el fuego ilumina el camino para nosotros, mostrándonos el camino de cambio que caminó nuestro Señor. Y en la pila bautismal, entre unos minutos, el agua misma va a clamar pidiendo bendición para abrir la puerta a la presencia del Espíritu de Cristo. Todos los sedientos ven al agua. En esta noche, mis hermanos y hermanas, toda la lengua en el cielo y en la tierra se une para proclamar la gloria de Dios Padre y el triunfo de su Hijo Jesús. Entonces, en otras palabras, todo lo que es y todo lo que puede ser es presente con nosotros esta noche, levantando un canto de alegría al Señor, quien recogió toda la creación en sí mismo cuando se levantó de la tumba y comenzó su peregrinaje de regreso a su Padre, llevándonos a todos con Él. Se restablece en Él la armonía que existía en el principio, cuando Dios creó todas las cosas muy buenas. Obviamente, no es que los problemas del pecado y la muerte nunca hayan existido. Es solo que han sido trascendidos por algo más grande esta noche. Por el poder del nombre sobre todo nombre. Un nombre que restaura nuestra memoria de lo que siempre debió haber sido. El nombre del Señor Jesús. Es muy parecido a la experiencia de Israel cuando cruzaron el Mar Rojo. Cantaron un canto de triunfo que fue más allá de cualquier canción que se había cantado antes en la Biblia. Cantaron al Señor que se ha cubierto de gloria y esta noche celebramos este triunfo. Que este triunfo se extiende no solo a un pueblo solo, muy lejos en el pasado, sino a todos. Para que la santidad del gran nombre de Dios sea demostrada en todas las naciones, a todos los pueblos, a cada ser humano. Para nosotros esta noche, mis amigos, quizás el mayor signo de cómo Cristo reúne todas las cosas en sí mismo para devolverlas al Padre está en las personas que están en el centro de nuestra celebración, los que van a recibir sus sacramentos esta noche. Y en verdad, los miembros de nuestro RCAE que han tomado la mano extendida del Señor y han elegido caminar con Él, en verdad, ustedes son para todos nosotros un ejemplo, una inspiración esta noche. 
Mis queridos amigos, en verdad, como su pastor, es un honor caminar con ustedes. Gracias por el don de su testimonio y su respuesta a la llamada de Dios. Gracias por no seguir el camino del mundo, sino por elegir caminar su peregrinaje como parte de la comunidad de Santo Tomás. Oro para que el poder de esta noche, la maravilla y el gozo que recibimos del Señor resucitado de entre los muertos, sea algo que resuene en sus corazones y mentes para siempre, hasta que llegamos juntos un día a ese país brillante donde está Jesús. Y mientras caminamos juntos por el camino, nuestras lenguas proclaman la verdad juntas, y nos encontramos unidos en esa verdad por toda la creación. El agua, entre unos minutos, va a retomar el poder que tenía al principio de la creación para llevar a cabo la voluntad de Dios, para llevarnos su espíritu. Y como para los israelitas, también para nosotros el agua se convierte en el camino angosto que conduce a la tierra de la promesa del Padre. Se restablece la vida, como aquel día hace dos mil años que proclamamos esta noche cuando amaneció en un acorde de triunfo. Dos mujeres, las dos llamadas María, fueron a la tumba de Jesús y encontraron una piedra que había sido removida. Un ángel vestido de blanco les habló con palabras que sobrepasaban toda posibilidad de esperanza humana. Buscan a Jesús, el crucificado, pero Él no está aquí. Ha resucitado, tal como prometió. Con esas palabras simples, sencillas, pero significativas, toda la creación que durante los siglos incontables había gemido bajo la carga del pecado y la muerte fue liberada para caminar con el Señor en su peregrinaje de regreso al Padre. En este momento, mis hermanos y hermanas, en esta noche nuestras rodillas se arrodillan y todas las cosas creadas hablan juntas con voz clara. Así que vamos a surgirnos en el agua esta noche. Vamos a caminar en la nueva luz de Cristo y sentir su calor en fuego y en las caras de nuestros amigos. Vamos a respirar profundamente el perfume del óleo y con los pies lavados por el Hijo de Dios peregrino. Vamos a cenar con el pan y el vino del amor de Dios, las bodas del cielo preparadas aquí abajo para nosotros. Y juntos, mis queridos amigos, recorremos el peregrinaje que Jesús nos ha abierto para que volvamos con él a la casa del Padre, en sacramento, en símbolo, en misterio, en alegría. En esta noche, por el poder de su resurrección, clamamos juntos con toda lengua en el cielo, en la tierra y debajo de la tierra. A la gloria de Dios Padre, que Jesucristo es el Señor. Amén. This time I invite those who are to receive baptism, along with their sponsors, to come forward to the front of the church. Dear friends in Christ, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help.
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, gracious 
graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one in the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass thy shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this fond, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And so, my dear friends who are to receive baptism and initiation into the fullness of the Catholic faith this night, I invite you in the presence of our gathered community here assembled to profess the faith that you have learned and in which you have walked. And so I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, 
rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the Church, which we are proud to profess through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I now invite each of you, one by one, to come forward to receive the waters of baptism. Wilbert, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Christian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Ovidia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Clarissa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Crystal, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jacqueline, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, we wait for a moment in joy as our newly baptized go to receive their baptismal garments, and also, I might add, to dry off their hair a little bit about that. <laughs> As our newly baptized return to the font, let's welcome them into the midst of our community. What a joy, what a celebration to have you all among us. My dear friends, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive these baptismal garments and bring them unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may have eternal life. Amen. I invite the godparents, one by one, to come forward to receive their baptismal candles. Receive the light of Christ. 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 Receive the light of Christ.
receive the light of Christ. So with joy in our hearts that you have received the healing waters of baptism, we now return to the center of the church where the fullness of the Holy Spirit is to be poured out upon you. My dear friends, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these newly baptized to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence, through Christ our Lord. Amen. By what name do you choose to be confirmed? Jacqueline. Jacqueline, Jacqueline be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Under what name do you choose to be confirmed? Hunter. Hunter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. By what name do you choose to be confirmed? Wilbert, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Under what name do you choose to be confirmed? Christian. Christian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Under what name do you choose to be confirmed? Ovidia. Ovidia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like to sit down, you're, you're welcome to. Under what name do you choose to be confirmed? Clarissa, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Under what name do you choose to be confirmed? Thomas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Once again, my brothers and sisters, let's join together in celebration of what God has accomplished in the lives of these wonderful people. This time, let us all stand, and we will have the newly baptized and confirmed relight our candles as a sign of our renewal as a community.
so, my brothers and sisters, having witnessed the saving sacraments of Christ's grace at work in the lives of our RCI members, it's time now for all of us to acknowledge the same mystery into which they have been committed. Through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us all renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, to the entire people of God, I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I, I do. do. And all his empty works? I, I do. do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, on this most holy night, every tongue in heaven and on earth unites with one mind and heart to share the joy of Easter with the whole world. Christ is risen, my dear friends, and the power of his resurrection fills the world today with new life and new light. With hope and expectation in the power of the Lord's rising, let us pray for the needs of our community, of the church, and of the entire human family. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Reka, bishops, priests, deacons, and all who serve the church, that they may proclaim the good news of the empty tomb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, that the peace of the risen Christ may reign forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed, that God will bless him with his wisdom and peace on this day and every day of their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Thomas Parish faith community, that we may become a community of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live under the shadow of death and war, especially those living in Ukraine, that they may experience light, peace, and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas and the men and women of the armed forces and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the new parishioners receiving sacraments tonight, we pray to the Lord. For all our beloved dead, that they may share in the glory of Jesus' resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, by your Son's cross and resurrection, you have set us free, and his Easter light now shines upon us to guide the path of your church. As we lift up these prayers to you, keep us faithful to our baptismal calling as we reveal by the witness of our lives that nothing has the power to destroy what your love has redeemed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please extinguish your candles and be seated for the preparation of the altar.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our communion song tonight is a little bit different than what's in the program. It's number 763 in the green hymnal, number 763, Ben al Banquete, or Come to the Feast, number 763. And we'll be using the bilingual refrain.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, I assure you I will make two very brief announcements. Uh, first, I'd just like to say a word of thanks to the many people who put in such hard work to make this Trudeau impossible. Everybody from our choir, who I know has been working ferociously hard since the start of Lent, thank you so much for the beauty you've brought to this. To all the people who've been working in very public ways, I'll name especially our altar servers, those here tonight, as well as those we've had on throughout the Triduum. Deacon David, seminarian John Paul, our volunteer ushers, our Eucharistic ministers, our lectors, so many people I know I forgot to name many. However, there's one group in particular I would like to point towards, uh, specifically our RCI members and our RCI team. Team, thank you so much for everything that you've brought to these wonderful people, your commitment to showing them how the light of, shine, Christ, Christ, light of Christ shines in our community. And for those who've just received sacraments, thank you as well for choosing to renew us, to inspire us by your example of faith. It's truly a privilege to walk this journey with you. Speaking of walking the journey together, that brings us to the second and final announcement. I'd like to invite everybody very briefly next door to the parish hall for just a brief uh, punch and cake get together, a chance to shake the hands and congratulate our newly baptized, confirmed, and those who've received First Holy Communion. Dos breves anuncios antes de irnos esta noche primero. Muchísimas gracias a todos los que han hecho posible esta celebración. El Sacro Trido es de celebraciones de los tres días de la muerte y resurrección de Cristo. No suceden uh, completamente por accidente. Están el fruto de mucho trabajo por muchas personas. Uh, y en particular quisiera dar una palabra de gracias a nuestro corro, a los monaguillos, a Diácono David, a Seminario Juan Pablo y muchas otras personas que han trabajado para hacer posible nuestra celebración. Una palabra particular de gracias al, al equipo de RCIA este año. Gracias por el trabajo que han puesto en las vidas de los que están recibiendo sus sacramentos. Y gracias especialmente a ustedes que han recibido sus sacramentos esta noche. En verdad, ustedes son una señal de esperanza y renovación para todos nosotros. Gracias por sus corazones abiertos a Dios, a su llamada. Gracias por habernos enriquecido con su presencia y oración. Segundo breve anuncio. Eh, los invito, les invito a todos al salón parroquial inmediatamente después de nuestra celebración. Será una oportunidad para, sí, para, de, para decir eh, hola a los nuevos miembros de nuestra comunidad. Y también uh, comer un poquito de punch y cake. Gracias a todos ustedes. And before we go, I'd like to just once again invite everybody to congratulate our newly baptized, confirmed, and First Holy Communion. Congratulations. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God 
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.